I'm testing this carriage for Jack. It's a 260. This is my sinker plate. That's not part of the test. And we are working, we were working in tuck. Now I'm going to switch to, by pushing the two part buttons, we'll be working in slip. Doing a really nice job. I already made four hats. One each of tuck, slip, and fair isle. I've also, let's do some end knitting. That cancels everything and we'll just knit stocking it. Did some short rowing. I'll do some while you watch. To short row, we engage the hold button. Knit across, put one in hold, knit across, put one in hold. I can put more than one if I want. I'm keeping my fingers towards the center of the work down here on the fabric, doing a little downward pressure to keep that those stitches from popping back up. And I made a mistake over here. This is me, not the machine. Um, I forgot to check that my yarn, the slack was pulled out of my yarn. This is something that happens with short rowing. Let me... Get this loop out of the way, and then next trip across, I'll show you what I mean. Before I go, I need to do this, because as I, no, this, pulling up here. Because as I cross these empty needles, there's a little tendency for them to make slack in the yarn and not let it go. So I'm removing it manually, putting more into hold removing the slack manually. And failure to do that produced this loop that if this were a real pair of socks, you would really be dismayed about for a test since I know what caused it. No biggie. Short rowing is one place where a sensitive carriage will show up that it's having problems. But here, I really should have a weight in the middle where my fingers are. And the fact that I'm able to provide enough tension downward with a fingertip is a very good sign. And now you're putting them back into work. Yes, and if you would put the camera where people can actually see what I'm doing, they don't need to see the back of the carriage. I was showing it from the bed view where the needle butt went to the work position. No one cares. Okay. <laughs> this is where we do our work. The needle butt is assumed to do its work. Did you see what I just did there? I caught the loop on the stitch so as to kind of work it in. So if this was the inside of a pair of socks, you might get by with my, your misdeeds if you were me. Progressively short rowing in, which we did as the rows got smaller, and then out. And it performed very well. Only problem was my doing. Let's go on to set the carriage for KC. Again, so it memorizes the row. You haven't seen it tuck yet. So now I'll press both tuck buttons, and we will proceed to tuck. I'm going to get a weight and hang it here. Because that um, loose spot where I just short rode could prove a problem for Tuck. Tuck requires a little downward weight anyway. So there it is in position. And we got our Tuck button, so we'll just do a few rows. As I said, I've already done four hats and also have lots of knitting down underneath here, so I know it's good. This is so you get to see it being good. All right, a little break while we find color two and we'll do Fair Isle. We're going to be mean to the carriage and go straight from tuck to MC. 
And we do want to show you we cancel MC, cancel MC, because these two buttons were behaving very naughtily in the past, but now they are not. The reason I say we're being mean to the carriage is asking it to go directly to two-color knitting with tuck loops on here is a challenge, and I just want to see how it's going to behave. And it did beautifully. No problems at all. It, ideally, it should, but you're asking it to take care of two things at once. And that it must knit off double loops as well as accept two different colors and keep them sorted out. Back to in. Get rid of color two. And we'll just scrap off here. And I believe, carriage, it's almost time for you to go home. Into the box it goes.